Hello everyone, welcome back. Thank you so much for joining me. Happy Monday, it is Monday. <laughs> so for those of you who have never been here before, on a Monday, Mondays, are where I tell ghost stories that my subscribers send in to me here on this email address. Ghost stories, people being scary stories. Um, I don't know, maybe your train was scary? Send it here. And I do a makeup based on a way to die, which I've been really bad at coming up with recently, but you know, that's life. So I am, um, I've cheated a little bit. I'm currently wear testing a foundation. So I've done my skin kind of already. I'll add a few other little bits, but we're gonna do the eyes today. I am using the Danessa Merrick's Lightwork Volume 3 Infinite Light Palette because I had to use this purple. I used the other colors already. Um, I don't know if I put a video out yet, but there's purples here, which I'm just, I'm salivating over. And I got some of her like flake things as well. So I thought, let's do it. Let's use them. Way to die. The, the way I died was purple. If you come up with a better way, tell me and I'll pin it. <laughs> I am just gonna use my um, Marrow palette, the neutrals, Master Mattes just to give myself a little bit of an outline before I get into it. Okay, let's get into our first story today. It feels like forever since I've done one of these, but it isn't, so. Our first story today is called Old Farmhouse Suicide Ghost. Hello, I just wanted to start by saying I love your makeup videos. I have a story about my family home that has been in our family off and on for a few generations. So to start my story, my grandparents are now living in the old family home that was built as a farmhouse in the early 1800s. It was built by one of my family members, not sure of the exact relation, as a wedding gift for his bride that had moved to Ohio from the colony states? Imagine someone buying, building you a house as a gift. She was originally from England and the family came seeking a new life and heard the opportunities of owning good farmland in Ohio. She met my family member and they quickly fell for each other from what the family knows and what we researched. She had one son and two daughters before one winter she became deathly ill and died from a disease. The husband wrote a poem on the wall upstairs and the records show he hung himself on the front tree in their yard. Weeks after his wife passed, his sister and husband took over the house and children and continued to live in the house and pass it down a few generations before my family lost it for a decade or so. That is when my grandparents bought the land and the house back. It was in disrepair and needed renovations. We found the poem on the wall upstairs when doing renovations and their old journals talking about his love. The first weekend, however, me and my cousins were staying the night when we decided to play with some recording equipment my grandparents had. We were just playing around, acting like I was a Powerpuff girl, nothing too serious. During the night, it had disappeared though. My, my grandparents thought it had been stolen and an intruder had taken it while we were asleep. But a couple of years ago, when I was 19, we were cleaning the upstairs when it suddenly appeared. We listened to a tape that we recorded, and you can hear me and my cousin, but in the background, you can also hear Miss You. My grandparents said that the rocking chair that was made by one of the couple's grandchildren would also frequently rock out of nowhere in the middle of the night. I believe it's the husband trapped alone in the house forever. I never felt anything wrong or bad, but there were a lot of times that I felt like there was somebody there. Ooh. <laughs> That's the thing. I bet he's there waiting for his wife to visit. Okay, next up we have an audio story and this is called Signs from Our Loved Ones. Hi Robert. Hopefully this audio will give you some time to finish your makeup. And if I could title it, I would call it Signs from Our Loved Ones. So I live in Ontario, Canada, and I just wanted to let everyone know that our loved ones who've passed leave us signs that they are around us, quote, in spirit. We just need to be open to those signs. And I'd like to give you a couple of examples of signs that I have received. So I lost my only niece who was just 35 when she passed. 
Six weeks before her passing, our family was so fortunate to have a week-long visit with her because she lived in a different province. Before she left, she asked my dad, who is her grandfather, if she could have several of his old shirts, probably for keepsakes. And one of those shirts was a long-sleeved red shirt with a sports logo on it that I had handed down to my dad from my son. So about six weeks later, on a Sunday night, I had a dream that I was standing in my kitchen, washing the dishes, wearing a long-sleeved red shirt. All of a sudden, this invisible ball of energy entered my heart and came out through my back. The sensation of that energy was so strong, it caused me to wake up from my dream, and I thought to myself, wow, what spirit just went through me? The next morning, I received a phone call from my nephew to say that my niece had passed away. Of course, I was just devastated. So after a while, I composed myself, and while sitting on my couch, I realized it had been my niece who had visited me in my dream. And this was her way of saying goodbye. You see, her and I often talked about the spirit world, so I'm certain it was her reaching out to me because she knew I would understand it was her. I have another experience to share about my niece. Her birthday is at the end of July, and I spent that day in one of my favorite towns having a coffee out on a patio. I was remembering her birthday, and I texted my nephew to say, hey, I was thinking of him and hoped he had reached out to his mom that day because I'm sure she was having, you know, a rough day too. So after my coffee, I went into some stores, and when I came out of the second store, I looked down and I saw a white feather. And I just knew that feather was for me, so I picked it up. And I said to myself, you know, she's thinking about me too. You know, I'm really so grateful to receive these messages from my niece. I believe I'm going to see her again someday. So thanks, Robert, for listening to my story. Because of you, I now wear eye primer. Thank you so much. That's such an incredible story. I absolutely love that. And I think you're you're right. We have to be open to, you know, receive those messages. And yeah, that was so lovely. Thank you so, so much. Okay, I'm back. <laughs> I had a little bit of an issue with this eyeshadow, like, gathering. I don't know if you can see. It's kind of gripping onto the skin. It isn't blending so well. I've used it before and it was great, so I don't know what's going on. Anyway, let's go on to our next story. Oh, no. The dog that lives in the cupboard. It's cute and sad. No. I have a headache. I can't cry. Okay, I'm going to try and really keep my call through this one. <laughs> wait, wait. Let me just do it. Let me just do it under my eyes first. Or should I wait? I probably should have waited, hey? Okay, let's just read this. <sighs> it says, Hello from Scotland. I heard that dog stories make you cry, so I thought I'd share mine. Thank you. When I was younger, I used to have a black lurcher called Bria, pronounced Bria, yeah, which means beautiful in Gaelic. She used to live in the computer cupboard completely by choice because she loved the heat from the old school computer. She used to come in at 10 p.m. every night without fail. So my dad could put her and my other two dogs to bed. She eventually died in the cupboard when I was 40. Some years later, I saw the cupboard door open. I thought it was my mum or something, so I asked who was there but received no reply. I looked at my watch. It was 10 p.m. I stood at the cupboard door and watched a knee-high black shadow of a dog walk into the living room. I couldn't believe my eyes. I followed it into the kitchen, where it lay on the blankets, <laughs> stared at me, and disappeared. My other dog seemed just as startled. Oh, oh. My other dog seemed just as startled as I was. To this day, I still think about her and how she came back 
to be put to bed. <laughs> Mm. Okay, I need to fix this like disaster eyeshadow because I don't know what the fuck's going on. <laughs> Thank you so much for your story. Oh, that is so cute. <laughs> I can't say anything else because I'll just cry. Thank you. So as is custom, we have Marcus now reading us two stories. Okay. Hi, Robert. This first story is called Ghost Story from a Funeral Director. Hi, Robert. I love your ghost stories. I'm also such a believer in the supernatural. Energy cannot be created or destroyed, and so it has to go somewhere, right? Anyway, here are some spooky stories for you. This isn't my own experience, but my mum is a funeral director, and she told me two stories today that gave me the chills. Just to add, for a story setting, the funeral parlour she works in is a really old, beautiful villa with high ceilings, chandeliers, and old, tiny furniture. They usually have a few bodies kept there, one at a time, some embalmed waiting for their service, and some kept in the fridge waiting to be cremated or buried. The first is, my mum was working one day at the funeral home by herself and had an elderly male in a coffin downstairs in the viewing room. The family was going to come to say their goodbyes and have a small service the next day. My mum went outside to get something from her car. Hers was the only one in the parking lot, and as she turned around she noticed through the window to the viewing room a man sitting in one of the chairs facing the coffin. She thought to herself, oh, I didn't realise there was anyone coming in today, and walked inside. Upon entering the room, she did not see anyone sitting in the chair, and she was definitely the only one there that day. She said it wasn't a scary feeling, but more of a calming one, and believes the man who had died was looking back at himself. The second story, and definitely the one I found most spooky, a funeral service was being held for a lady who was lovingly remembered for having a fondness for cats. The priest was saying his eulogy and was mentioning this love for cats as, mid-speech, a random stray cat entered the church and started weaving in between the pews, making its way to the front where the coffin was. Apparently, it didn't look like it was just wandering around either. It knew where it was headed. The cat reached the coffin and did a circle of it, and when it reached the front again where everyone could see, it sat and held its paw up to touch the coffin, holding it there for a second or two. It then turned around and walked straight back out the centre aisle. Here's a bonus spook. My mum also says that usually when they receive bodies of people who have died of old age, or died peacefully, there is a calm and gentle feeling around the parlour. However, when they receive someone who has died tragically or suddenly, everyone notices a dark, heavy feeling enter the building, and sometimes leaves after the family have come to their viewing. But sometimes, it's not until the body is buried or cremated. I don't know how my mum does this job. She's such a strong woman for doing so, although I did hate it when she used to pick us up from school in the hearse. Could be worse, our mum used to pick us up on one of those tandem bikes and we used to have to bike home for about five miles. Story two, the grey man. Before I get into this, I just want to say I love your makeup looks. Thank you for teaching me how to contour properly. When I was about five or six, I had no idea what religion was. My family were Catholic, and obviously as a child, I didn't understand the concept. My brother was a regular churchgoer, and I must have got tired of him constantly talking about Jesus, because I didn't know who he was going on about. One day, I chucked a tantrum and screamed that I hated Jesus, and I broke a plate that had a depiction of Christ's face on it. I sound like a devil child, I know. That evening, I was suddenly woken up in the middle of the night. When I woke, I saw a man standing over my bed. Except it wasn't a man. He had grey skin and was very short from what I had noticed. He wore a black suit and was smiling at me without blinking. His lips were red and he had shaved his hair, which was ginger. I stared at it for a long time, just frozen, but then out of fear I covered my face with my blanket. After a few minutes I looked again, and he was gone. The following night the same instance occurred, except this time he was sitting on top of my chest, still smiling and staring down at me. I was mortified. After these instances, I was forced to go to church and learn more about my religion, due to my parents seeing how traumatised I was. A few years later, my older brother, who was still heavily involved in the church, had a book written by a priest who was experienced in exorcisms. He read me part of the book which stated that demons can appear in various forms. One way could be as a shadowy figure, or it can appear as a small dark figure, similar to what I had seen as a child. And to this day, even as an 18-year-old, 
I always sleep with a lamp on. Ghost stories finished for another day, a week, two weeks. Uh, have a great two weeks, everyone, and I'll see you soon. Yeah, that's spooky. I can imagine, I don't know, I don't think I would feel fully comfortable in funeral homes because I would just be, what the fuck is going on today? I think I would just be scared always, you know? Yeah, I wouldn't be able to work alone or do anything like that and that wouldn't be very good for anyone. <laughs> I was going to try and fix this, please bear with. Okay, so I had to completely redo my eye makeup just then because I didn't use an eye primer. That's why it was starting to look all weird because I was just putting it straight onto my greasy eyelids. So this is it with eye primer, I'm done. I need to put on some blush or something, actually. Okay, so let's look at some TikToks. If you've seen scary TikToks, you can um, at me on TikTok. It's at Robert Welsh MUA. Um, yeah, just show me them. Okay, I'm I'm always scared of this book because they always make me a little bit like jumpy. Um, okay, let's look at the first one. The light in the bathroom started flickering, and I water running. So I kind of snuck around the corner and. The water was on. As I started to walk away from the bathroom after cutting the water off, I kind of heard something behind me, and that was actually this door here that closed. That's when I really truly got freaked out. All the chairs were on the floor, knocked over, all the cabinets were open. Nope, 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 nope. I said, nope, I'm going, I'm going back outside and this, I don't know what this is. I, I got scared. The fourth or fifth time I had watched the video, I noticed something in the corner of the room, which is actually my daughter's room. So I screenshotted it and I just zoomed in on it. My heart just dropped. <laughs> oh my God. Oh my god, that's one of those ones where it makes me not want to be in this room by myself. <sighs> I couldn't I couldn't stay in that house, could you? If I saw that, this bronze is horrific. This is from Inglot, it's very orangey. I could not stay in that house, that, that looks terrifying. Absolutely terrifying. <sighs> god. Just before going to this next one, I just want to say, if you have a dog, if you watch this on your TV or on your phone, and you have a dog that's very reactive to other dogs' barks, you might want to shut the, like, um, mute it, um, or listen to it another time, because you do kind of need the audio, but there's a dog barking throughout this video. Again, terrifying. Basements in general. You know what you should do? Put a load of like LED lights on those stairs and just light it up forever. <laughs> just lights absolutely everywhere. Don't let that area be dark. <laughs> okay, let's take a look at our last TikTok today. These are scary today. I woke up in the middle of the night to this. Was that someone standing there? No, I got, mm. just makes me so uncomfortable knowing that that could be happening in someone's house. Okay, well, this is the finished look. That was a complete disaster today. But yes, thank you so much for joining me. If you have any ghost stories, go ahead and send them right here to this email address. If it's a written email, it it can probably take up to a year for me to read it. I'm not even joking, a year. If you have a voice, um, if you record it with voice, if you video it, if, if it's whatever, if it comes along with pictures, it's probably going to skip ahead. So go ahead and send them right here. Um, 
TikTok at me, Robert Welsh, MUA. Thank you so much again for joining me, and I will see you very, very soon. Bye.